Hello, my name is Batista Cavodi. I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about how I got into reading X-Men comic books, why I love these characters so much. Um, here you see my old school Marvel trading cards that basically were my gateway drugs into reading comic books, but I'm sort of getting ahead of myself. So, I just want to share my love for these characters with you guys. And um, getting out of this introduction, probably my first, the first time I ever saw the X-Men was actually in that weird X-Men pilot that came out back in the late 80s. It was, it was a cartoon that uh, the X-Men recruit uh, Kitty, Kitty Pride, Shadowcat, into the team. She gets kidnapped by Magneto and his Brotherhood of Edible Mutants, Wolverine for some reason. <laughs> had an Australian accent was that was actually really weird because for years I thought Wolverine had an Australian accent within my head and um, later I found out he was Canadian and <laughs> he's he probably sound totally different but that was sort of a, a funny thing about that cartoon and what it left with me and uh, so right around the time of that cart when I saw that cartoon for the first time I remember going to the arcade playing the um, the X-Men beat em up game that was awesome I remember on one of my birthdays with all my friends to the arcade we got my dad got us tons and tons of quarters we, were, we went crazy playing all the games and uh, we all really focused on that one because uh, you could play I don't remember it was four or five characters at the same time but a lot of people could play it at the same time so it was a blast and uh, so that was like the first time I saw a ton of characters from the X-Men side of the Marvel Universe. The first time I saw them was in that game. So, uh, the Blob, Wendigo, the Sentinels, Reavers, Mystique, um, well, Magneto and the brother, the characters from the Brotherhood, I actually saw them in the X-Men pilot. But you guys get the idea. Um, Nimrod was actually even in that video game. I didn't know the names, but... Years later, I, when I sat down to play that game again, I said, I recognized all those characters. And I also recognized those characters when I started collecting X-Men comic books. I did remember a couple of them. So, that was super cool. So, I was sort of interested with uh, the, the idea of the X-Men. I remember during that time, I was buying Nintendo games. I used to go to a pawn shop with my dad. We would buy used games and stuff like that. And I, I remember seeing the X-Men video game there. I thought this has to be as good as the arcade <laughs> game and boy that was a surprise that, that was rough that game was just terrible and uh, <laughs> and I just really wanted to give it a chance uh, I would play it and play it and see it, if I could find something cool in it but it was just oh it was awful and um, I remember seeing on the cover all the characters I'm gonna probably put an image here because I'm gonna edit this video and there's a guy all white on the top and I thought he was the Silver Surfer because I, I sort of discovered the Silver Surfer too during this time and so I didn't understand what the hell is the Silver Surfer doing on the X-Men you have to remember I was really young I was I was just getting into comic books but it was obviously it was Iceman very early 90s late 80s started collecting my first comic books I used to hang out at my uncle's house so at night he, he was studying and because I used to live in Los Angeles back then he lived in Torrance. I used to go to his house there because my family's from Argentina. So he had just arrived from Argentina. He went to study to the States. So at night, I would hang out with my uncle, but at night he needed him. He needed to study, so he would buy me comic books at the local supermarket. So some of the first comic books were actually Spider-Man, New Warriors, and Darkhawk. I remember Darkhawk, too. So I was sort of getting into comic books. I suffered dyslexia when I was a kid, so I had a, it was really hard for me to learn how to read. And um, comic books really helped me. The, the, the question of the, the dialogue bubbles and stuff like that helped me to find the text and not lose myself. So my dad saw, saw me getting really hooked on comic books. The, ex, the um, Marvel trading cards started to be a, like a real big thing in my school. Uh, I remember all the kids start trading them and I was just like, everything sort of converged at the same time. Comic books in the early 90s were really big with kids. So my dad, we went, there was always garage sales in my neighborhood in Los Angeles, I lived in Mar Vista on the weekends. So we would always go to these garage sales and I saw a box of comic books 
and within that box I had Wolverine one number I, I bought the whole box I pleaded with my dad it's like it's really cheap <laughs> Wolverine number one number two was there mixed in and my first X-Men comic books ever X Men 243, part of the Inferno crossover. Obviously, reading this thing, I was really confused because it's this is at the end of the Inferno crossover, but uh, so I didn't understand what the hell was going on, and I didn't recognize a lot of characters, or some of the characters were very changed. So, this came out in 1989. Just love to see the old advertisements. You have Tengen Pac Man, which Tengen didn't have that the the true license uh to put out nintendo games so the cartridges look sort of different had the whole thing with the, the goblin queen like i didn't understand anything but i remember seeing mr sinister and thinking man that that villain looks cool as hell it was obviously written by chris claremont mark silvestri does a killer job on the art and like for the longest time i didn't know who Psylocke was because when I started really reading comic books, she was the Asian version. She had she hadn't changed yet, so I didn't know who she was. And back then, obviously, we didn't have internet, so you couldn't Google that type of stuff. And she didn't have a, a trading card looking like this, so I was like, I didn't know who she was. Polaris took me a while to realize who she was from this comic book. Uh, some of the members of the Marauders, and I I didn't know who they were. First time I ever saw Sabretooth in a comic book was actually in this story too. And this final shot here with Longshot, with Sinister having taken down the X-Men, it was freaking awesome. And it took me forever to get a, a, paper, um, a trade paperback of the Inferno story, the whole thing. Because right after I started really collecting comic books, I moved to Argentina and for the longest time I couldn't get comic books anymore. It really sucked. But I remember going to the comic, my local comic book store. I had one a couple blocks away. Um, I remember a guy, the the salesman at the comic book shop was exactly like the guy from <laughs> from The Simpson, that really fat, obnoxious comic book salesman. He was exa exactly the same, only he was black. I remember, but he, he acted just like <laughs> that character from The Simpsons. I remember the first con uh, X Men comic book I saw on the shelves was part of the Muir Island cr uh, Crisis, where Rogue was fighting against a uh, strong guy. I remember seeing that cover and going, thinking to myself, wow, that looks awesome. The Extinction Agenda was a thing. Like here, I have the, actually the Extinction Agenda trading card there. I remember seeing these on the, on the shelves too. And um, so I got on board exactly with X-Men number one, the one with the uh, Jim Lee cover. I bought all four, or all five variants, but I was a little kid. I was just getting into comic books, so I thought there were five individual comic books with different stuff inside it, not the same issue with different covers. So I remember being really, really pissed off about that. But within the trading cards, because as I said before, all I learned about comic books and characters, because I had a lot of catching up to do, <laughs> was from the trading cards. So this was like from the Marvel Series 1 the roster from the 80s, the mid 80s. No, actually, early 80s. This wasn't the mid 80s lineup. So we had Rogue. I rec didn't know who she was. Shadowcat, I did recognize from the cartoon pilot. Nightcrawler, he was pretty kick ass from the video game. Obviously, Colossus 2. Wolverine, I really loved that character. As I said before, I thought he had an Australian accent for a real long time. Storm, punk rock era Storm, I thought it was really cool. Cyclops. Didn't know who she was. Uh, we have Rachel Summers. The X Men lineup. Right around the time I started started reading comic books, um, this was like the modern X Men team, and I was pretty confused because the strong guy. I didn't know who the hell he was, and he was never really part of the X Men. Like he was like he, was, he would pop up every once in a while, but he I didn't I don't remember seeing him on any particular roster. Even though he was during on the X Men series during the Mirror Island Crisis. Rogue, Forge, Gambit that looked really weird at first. Like it took a while to establish his um, his his look. Wolverine always chomping on a cigar because back then having cigars and smoking was cool in comic books. Psylocke, Jubilee, who I never really liked. <laughs> She's an okay character, but like Marvel really pushed 
Jubilee to be a main character. Storm without a mohawk. Havoc. I remember Havoc popping up in the Wolverine, Net, Nintendo Wolverine game and Banshee. Then you had the gold X-Men lineup when the two X-Men series, you got X-Men number one with the blue lineup, which this is what it's my all-time favorite X-Men lineup. You have Wolverine, Beast, Cyclops, Rogue, Gambit, and Psylocke. And then the Uncanny X-Men series, you had the gold lineup with Storm, Archangel, Colossus, Iceman, and Jean Grey. Like, out of the both, seri both series, this was the series that I liked the most. Like, with the stories and the villains and stuff like that, I felt this one had more legs to it. Here we have from the Jim Lee X-Men collection. That That's my all-time favorite card collection. That, that collection was awesome. So, here we have the blue team. And here we have the gold team. The thing that I found really confusing was the whole thing with X-Factor because they were the original X-Men, but they weren't on the X-Men. They weren't on a separate team called X-Factor. And so that, reminder, I was really young. So so for that, for me, was sort of um, complicated. And the thing is that right when I got into comic books, X-Factor was being folded over. The, these members were going, rejoining the X-Men. The X-Factor that game was this one afterwards that I'm going to talk later on. And actually, my first uh, X-Men comic, well, not X-Men, but part of the X-Men family was a uh, comic book, was actually an X-Factor comic book. Uh, I was took a flight to Reno, Nevada back when I was a kid. My dad bought me an X-Factor comic book that I really loved, but I, for some reason, I didn't get hooked yet. <laughs> I remember there was a character called Alchemist or something like that. He changed things into gold. Like, so actually, that's actually my first X comic book. So, this is my story, how I got hooked with X-Men. Hope you guys liked it, because after this, my focus of my whole comic book collection revolved around X characters up until the early 2000s. Then, I sort of straight away, I didn't like what they were doing at the beginning of the 2000s with the X-Men. But, uh, and ever since the year 2000, it was like, until this moment, there's some really, really good moments and some not so good. It's like <laughs> the quality oscillates a lot. Uh, my collection mainly focus, focus on Avengers and stuff like that nowadays. But And Hickman stuff hasn't arrived here in Argentina. Like We're two years behind with the whole crisis, economic crisis that we have. So that really sucks. And I'm really interested in reading that stuff. So this is my personal story of why I love the X-Men. Oh, because I forgot to mention, like... Another thing that really got me hooked on uh, X Men is the fact that there's a it's a very multi multicultural team. I, I grew up in Los Angeles, part of an immigrant family, and um, my school was very multicultural. So I sort of saw, saw my personal life <laughs> and reflected on this team because all the kids at my school were for different walks of life, and also I was really into um, Star Trek: Next Generation, where I sort of saw that whole situation. So. Um, that's how, that's why I was so, sort of drawn to it too. So now that's how I really got hooked on X-Men. All these characters I thought were really cool. Wolverine was my favorite back then. Uh, he was a total badass. And, um, so guys, I hope you liked this video. It was sort of mess because I'm totally improvising, but I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.